You guys, we have a large announcement, and I'm going to give you the announcement up front, and then we're going to explain how we came to this decision. Tim is moving to Hollywood to pursue acting. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> He's and Josh is going to work for NASA. I, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used NASA at the last hour, but Tim yeah. being an actor actually seemed more convincing, more plausible than me working for NASA, being that I was actually in low, okay, low math. Okay, so the announcement yeah. is... Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, I can't tell you. I'm not going to tell you. No. So here's the deal. Door of Hope, for the last two years, uh, has been trying to figure out how to manage our growth. Uh, and if, for those of you who remember what it was like at Door of Hope, and we were at Southeast for five years in a space that could handle our community. It was a, a room that held 650 people to 700. And we were actively pursuing, if, for those of you who were around then, uh, Washington High School. You guys know where Washington High School is? It's on, it's on 12th, and, 12th and Stark, or 14th and, 14th and Stark. And it's one of the oldest schools on the east side. And it was empty from 89 until a couple years ago. And we lost out on the building. Uh, we thought we were going to be able to get it. And the day that we found out we weren't going to get it, we made an announcement to the church, and a young man came up to us and told us about this building. And so we were blessed with the Northeast building. Um, but the challenge of this building is that it's a building that's really built for about 300 people, and we've been cramming about 800 adults into this space uh, every Sunday or more, uh, and often turning away families because of inadequate children's space. And so what we've moved toward is that parish model where we thought we could actually take some of the space and the tension off of this building and begin looking at other neighborhood churches. Uh, and so we launched Southeast uh, a few months ago, and what we found is that that um, has not effectively relieved much here. And this is a great example of that right now in this room. Uh, and we have just been praying about what to do, and in the, in the meanwhile, we have exhausted ourselves. Uh, we're doing five gatherings. I'm preaching five times today. And by 7 o'clock, I don't even like people. I don't like church. Uh, and so, uh, and that's not, that's not good for your pastors to feel that way. It's not good for your staff to feel that way. And what we realize is that we have created a model, although we're committed to the parish model, how we're currently doing it um, is not, we just have to admit, it's not, we didn't know totally what we were doing. There's some things we could have foreseen. There are other things we couldn't have. And we've discovered that we have not created a sustainable model. Um, and so through praying for that, God opened up an incredible door, and that is, for those of you who went to our Christmas Eve gatherings, uh, Washington High School now has a beautifully, probably the best event space on the east side, one of the best in Portland, uh, in Revolution Hall. It's a room that seats 100 more than the annex did, uh, about 850, uh, and it has, it has just beautiful space, half million dollar sound system. It comes with its own sound guy and its own janitorial and they have offered it to us for Sunday morning gatherings. Um, and what that means for us as a church is that we're going to keep our Northeast building, because we're in the process of buying it, and we've invested greatly into that, to use this building for our midweek gatherings, our prayer services, incubator for church plants, and the right way of doing a parish, which is building around a leadership team uh, and giving it time to develop. Uh, and at the same time, we're going to move beginning on Easter, our morning gatherings here and our Southeast evening gatherings to two services at Revolution Hall, uh, which is going to create so much more breathing space for us, us as a church, bring our community back together, for we've just received so many complaints about fragmentation amongst the community and even for us as staff and leadership. And we are really excited about it. It's a shift. It's the first time we've ever like really gone for something and actually like said, well, this isn't working and had to kind of take a back turn. But part of the problem is that we have been for the last two years dealing with a series of stop gaps to try to figure out how to run a big church in a small space. And it's just not feasible. We're overwhelming our neighborhood. Um, neighbors here are not very excited. Maybe 100 people that come to this location live within walking distance. The rest of you drive here. Um, and that doesn't make for happy neighbors because there's no parking. Uh, and where Revolution Hall is right in the center of the city, right? And it has a huge parking lot, and it's a beautiful space, and it has a breakfast 
cafe that they're going to open on Sunday mornings for, uh, for all of you, although they, will be, they don't know really what they're in for. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but we're excited for them to find out. Uh, and, uh, uh, and it has, the other huge thing is it has much, much more adequate space for children's ministry, which was the thing, the reason we didn't pursue it earlier is because we didn't know that they actually owned all these conference rooms, which were classrooms, giant classrooms for high school. Uh, so it's super exciting. Um, but for some of you, that's sad because you don't like change. And we recognize that, but we also, we also want to do, uh, as we have wrestled with this for hours and hours as elders and as staff, uh, this is not a quick, impulsive decision. This was like weeks and weeks of really wrestling and praying. Um, so Tim's going to give you just a little bit of a uh, quick statement of why we came to this decision uh, because it wasn't, because it's easy to think that I just, I'm strong-armed everyone. Uh, and I didn't. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> this is, I'm making a short story even shorter. Make a short story boring, as they say. Um, so we're happy to, the elders are happy to field any questions and so on. Um, p- part of this began as we just were evaluating how we launched Southeast, the Southeast Parish, which was last November, but we'd been designing, architecting it for many, many months before that. And our idea was, you know, let's launch it as an evening service, um, we'll have lot, most of the core staff, including Josh and I, r- begin to rotate around and for Josh and I to become like circuit teachers among however many parishes that we have and um, have the leadership team spread out. And it, basically we just looked at ourselves after months of doing that and just like, yeah, this is not working. Uh, this is, and uh, we, there are some parts of it we maybe could have predicted. There were a whole bunch of pieces that we just learned as you go. I think that's how most of us operate in life. You learn as you go. Um, For Josh and I and many of the staff, what we found is that Door of Hope became a job and not so much a community anymore because we're like, where do I, who's my church? (laughs) Like, because we're kind of everywhere and all different places on Sunday. Um, If you compare, if you just go down our, our staff team and you look at how much money and resources were going to pulling off the Sunday gatherings a year and a half ago to right now, uh, it's double. And that's just a reality that when you have five services in two locations, holy cow. And so um, we, don't, we think we're compromising our third pillar that way, which is simplicity. And um, it's not about the parish model in itself, it's the way that we went about it. And so... Um, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, come for a season where we just do Sundays in a more simple way, where more people can come together. And um, what the elders want to begin dreaming and praying about is what does it look like to do parishes more in the style of church plants. So you begin with a leadership team, and then they rally a core of people, and they, that core of people could meet here for uh, a while before we launch and they have more independence and and autonomy, but are a part of a network of churches. Uh, We think that's more, but your elders, we're all gonna be planning and praying that through over the next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what we're doing right now isn't isn't working, and we actually think it's not actually working for much of you all, the church community. Um, And so there you go, this was a hard decision. Uh, It took us a, a lot of time to work through it. There are cons to it, but we think there are more pros than cons, and so we're going to move, yeah. move forward with it. Yeah, and for some of you, uh, you uh, that know John Abraham, who's been our parish pastor at Southeast, uh, just to, to you guys know, John has actually been, uh, I mean, A, he knew stepping in he was going to be a guinea pig on the parish, and he was one of the people that really vocalized that what we're currently doing isn't working, uh, that it created a lot of ambiguity for him and his role. Uh, because we didn't establish it around the leadership team, but just tried to establish it in a neighborhood around a contingency of people that live there. And what we found, even as we did, we did all the, the cards asking for your guys' social security, or not social security cards. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's what I wanted to do, but the elder said no. Uh, <laughs> for your zip codes. Zip codes. Uh, that, that was awesome. Big difference. <laughs> that, that would be the difference between a cult and a church. <laughs> uh, but what we realized as a staff, uh, in, including John, is that, we, that the, the people that were going even to the southeast location, unless you lived more than one mile from the parish, you chose based upon convenience and your community. 
um, and that, that what we're dealing with is a city that is so dramatically changed. You know, it's good news is that 80% of our church lives in Portland, in the city of Portland. It's probably the highest number of evangelicals in, in a church in the city. Uh, that's incredible. That's even higher than when we did the did this same uh, survey three years ago. Uh, but what we've found is that more and more are living in, further out in the city um, as the prices of the city continue to skyrocket. And with so many young young people and so many people getting married, that we have huge contingencies coming from Rosa Parks. And so that just means really heavy traffic on two neighborhoods where we actually don't have huge presence. Uh, and this allows us to really think through that strategically as the city's changing. We have to adapt without compromising our pillars. The parish was not the pillar, the city's the pillar. Uh, and so this is, uh, this is our goal. Uh, we're excited about it. If you guys see John Lowen, he's going to continue to be doing the same thing, pastoral care, uh, youth ministry, and even f- we're all going to be putting our heads together as staff to think about how to do the parish correctly. Uh, and the staff and the elders were unanimous in this and excited about it. So uh, we hope that clarifies on e- some level. Easter. We said Easter, that? yeah, Easter is our first, our first gatherings there. Uh, and so, two services. And then, what time? 9 and 11 right now is what we're looking at. It might, depending on tear down and set up for the kids' ministry. We'll let uh, you know. Yeah, we'll let you know. Could, <laughs> it could, it could ver- shift just slightly, but that'll be the approximate time. All right? There you have it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>